Hi everyone, we're going to look at flow rates and dosage rates for intravenous medication. The objectives we're going to be focusing on here are the conversions and the calculations. So we'll be going from dosage rates to IV rates and vice versa, calculating infusion rates um, with the intravenous piggyback, so IVPB. And we'll also be calculating infusion rates based on the patient's size, as well as some other calculations. This image here is of an intravenous piggyback infusion. The intravenous piggyback allows you to um, administer medication through a port in an existing IV line. So if you notice the secondary bag toward the top, it's higher than the primary infusion um, IV bag. And what that allows is for there to be more pressure on that bag and therefore um, the medication in the bag would infuse first. Here's an example of some of the tubing used for the secondary bag. Notice you have different drop factors on the first one. You have 60 drops per milliliter, and the second one is 10 drops per milliliter. All right, for our calculations, most of the time we're going to be using um, the first equation, which we've learned in the past. It's flow rate, which equals volume over the time. And then now, this new one is the dosage is going to equal the drug over the time. So notice in both of these equations, we're dividing by the time. So we're infusing um, some amount over some period of time. So for our first example, we are uh, converting flow rate to dosage rate. Okay? So the IV is infusing at 100 milliliters per hour. That's the flow rate, and we want to go to the dosage rate. We want to know how much of the medication, how many milligrams in this case, um, is being infused uh, over a period of time. The strength of the solution is 200 milligrams in 500 milliliters. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to find the dosage rate in milligrams per hour. So we are going to convert our flow rate, 100 milliliters per hour, to milligrams per hour. So we're not changing the time the time units, um, but we are going to convert milliliters to milligrams. And how we're going to do that is we're going to multiply by the strength. Okay, so down here you can see the strength. And we put the milliliters in the denominator because we want these milliliters to divide out with the milliliters um, and the flow rate, which will leave us with milligrams per hour. Okay, so this is going to end up as 40 milligrams per hour, and that's our dosage rate. Next example, this time we're going to be converting the dosage rate to the flow rate. So the patient is receiving 10 milligrams per minute, that's the dosage rate, through an IV piggyback. The solution has a strength of 400 milligrams per mil 100 milliliters. Find the flow rate and we want this in milliliters per hour. Okay, so we're going to convert our um, milligrams over minutes to milliliters per hour. And we're going to use a strength in order to do this. So if you notice here, we have um, our 10 milligrams per minute starting off our equation, our calculation. And our first unit fraction comes from wanting to change the time. So we want to go from minutes to hours. So this is our unit fraction allowing us to do that. And then our next one is our strength. So we have the strength was 400 milligrams per milliliter, and we just flipped over the strength so that the milligrams will be on the denominator and divide out with the milligrams um, from our first term over here. And then what's left is our units that we're looking for. We have milliliters over hours. Okay, and then the numbers will give you 150. So 150 milliliters per hour. Now we're going to be calculating dosage rates based on the size of the patient. And when we do this, um, a lot of the um, rates that we'll be working with are compound rates. So we have, in this case, uh, 2 milligrams per kilogram per minute. So notice that we have the medication and it's based on the size and the time. Okay. So for every minute that passes, the patient receives two milligrams and that's per every kilogram that they weigh. Right? And when you simplify this fraction here, well this uh, compound rate I should say that we have given at the top, when you put it in unit fraction form or fraction form, it ends up being the two milligrams over kilograms times the minutes. So it's going to be their size times 
the time. For this example, the prescriber ordered 250 milliliters of 5% dextrose with 9 milligrams of RDA, 1 1,000 milligram per kilogram per minute IV stat. So here's the specifics. Um, the patient weighs 80 kilograms and the drop factor is 20 drops per milliliter. Now what we're wanting to do is calculate the flow rate and we want the flow rate in drops per minute. Okay, so that we've extracted the important information down here with these four um, slashed bulleted points. So the patient weighs 80 kilograms. The order is one one thousandth uh, milligrams per kilogram of their body weight per minute. The solution strength is given. It's nine milligrams per 250 milliliters. And then the drop factor is 20 drops per one milliliter. Okay, so to perform this calculation, we're going to multiply the size of the patient times the compound order. Then we're going to multiply by the strength and the drop factor, and this will get us what we're looking for, which is drops per minute. So we start with the size of the patient, which is 80 kilograms. Then we're going to multiply by the order, which was 1 1,000th of a milligram. This was per kilogram per minute. So notice the denominator of this fraction. We have kilograms times the minute. From there, we multiply by the strength, and lastly, we're going to multiply by the drop factor. And notice all of our units divide out that we no longer are needing, and what's left over is exactly what we were looking for. We have drops per minute. So this ends up being 44.3 drops per minute. Now, whenever you have the potential to round some of the factors in your calculation, don't do it um, in the calculation process because it could change the end result. So if you're going to round, wait till the end after you're done calculating and just round the final answer. For this example, we have 500 milligrams of a drug ordered IV push over two minutes. Now, IV push allows the medication to be pushed directly into the vein. And this can be done with a syringe inserted directly into a vein or a saline lock or a heparin lock that can be attached to an IV catheter. And it's usually done for a short period of time. Now the flow rate with this process is determined by the speed at which the plunger of the syringe is manually pushed. So it's really important to control that speed. Sometimes because of the desired flow rate, um, it's hard to maintain that same rate if the infusion time is very long. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to divide the flow rate into smaller segments then therefore would be easier to control. Okay, so for this example, the concentration of the drug is 100 milligrams per milliliter. How many milliliters would, will you administer? Determine the number of milliliters you will push during each 30 second interval. So notice the time um, is originally over two minutes, but we're going to consider 30 second intervals. That's a smaller amount of time, and it would be easier to control the flow rate for 30 every 30 seconds, as opposed to for the entire two minutes, counting from the beginning of the time of infusion until two minutes later. You can just count 30 seconds at a time. The first part of the question asked about the milliliters that we would be administering. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take the order of 500 milligrams and multiply it by the strength of 100 milligrams per one milliliter. So we're left with five milliliters. Now the second part of the question asked to, to determine the number of milliliters that would be pushed during every 30 second interval. So our order was for 500 milligrams over a period of two minutes. So we're going to um, figure out how this translates to 30 seconds, how many milliliters for 30 seconds. So notice our final calculation down here. We have 30 seconds, and we first go from seconds to minutes, so we multiply by that unit fraction. Then we are going to multiply by our dosage rate, which was our 500 milligrams um, per two minutes. And then lastly, we're going to multiply by our strength, which will allow us to go from milligrams to milliliters because we're wanting to know the answer in milliliters. So we end up dividing out the seconds, the minutes, the milligrams and leftover with milliliters and we have that 1.3 milliliters will be infused over a 30 second time interval. So for this example we're going to be considering adding the drug to an IV piggyback. 
So the patient must receive 300 milligrams of a drug IV piggyback and 100 milliliters normal saline over a period of 60 minutes. So two parts to this question. How many milliliters must be added to the IV bag if the vial of the drug has a strength of 75 milligrams per milliliter? So for this part, we're wanting to know how many milliliters to add to the 100 milliliters of normal saline. Um, and this is going to be based on the strength that 75 milligrams of the drug is contained in one milliliter. Then secondly, we want to know at what rate should the pump be set to infuse over 60 minutes. Okay, so we're going to take our vial strength and um, use it to convert our 300 milligrams to milliliters. And we just multiply the strength times 300 milligrams and we're left with 4 milliliters. Now this is the amount that we're going to add to the 100 milliliters of the normal saline, which will yield a total volume of 104 milliliters. Then because the, the rate is going to be an amount of, or a volume over time, we're just going to take this 104 milliliters, um, divide it by time. Our time is 60 minutes or one hour, so our pump is going to be set at a rate of 104 milliliters per hour. So for the chapter summary, um, the IV piggyback is a secondary line. The IV push or the bolus medications can be injected into um, a heparin lock, saline lock, or directly into the vein. And then a gravity system, in the gravity system, the IV bag is hung, uh, that's hung highest will be the first one to infuse. So the, the piggyback IV bag is going to be hung higher, the pressure is greater, allowing it to infuse first. A compound rate is going to be um, some amount, so like milligrams, grams, per the size and per the time. So in this case, per kilogram per minute. So the person's size and then also according to some amount of time. And when the size of the patient is multiplied by a compound rate, the dosage rate is obtained, which we did an example with that. And then with titrating medications, um, which we didn't really go over, um, the dose is adjusted until the desired therapeutic effect is achieved. So for titration, this is just when you adjust the medication based on the response of the patient.